Hello, everybody. Just going to give it another couple of minutes. Hello, welcome, welcome. We're just going to give it another two minutes before we get started here. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, good afternoon, and welcome to our Partner Sales Readiness Webinar. My name is Jessica Samuels. I'm the Global Channel Enablement Manager for the Poly Video Conferencing Solutions here at HP. And the focus of these webinars, if you haven't been to one before, is to provide a brief introduction to our recently announced Poly Video Conferencing Solutions and any other sort of portfolio updates we may have for you. Uh, so definitely keep a lookout for these webinars moving forward. A few housekeeping notes before we begin. This session will be recorded and we will email a link to the recording um, to all of our registrations and all of our attendees in a follow-up email a few days after the session, uh, likely next week. And then additionally, please feel free to submit any questions that you have in our Q&A box and we'll do our best to answer those during the session or at the end, um, but feel free to type them away. And with that, uh, we have a great session for you all. So I'm going to hand it over to Takeshi to go ahead and get started for us. Thank you, Jessica. And uh, hi, everyone. Good morning, good day, or good afternoon. Um, so today, as Jessica mentioned, uh, we're going to talk about a new product announcement that happened last week, almost a week ago. Um, so we have pretty packed agenda, if you believe it. Uh, so. I'm going to go straight into the contents, but um, in terms of the year 2024, we started with uh, announcements in March and the, the uh, March announcements, uh, we primarily focused on uh, new cameras. Um, so we have Poly Studio B52, which is, um, if you're familiar with uh, Studio X52, this is a premium USB uh, video bar version of the Oh, the content went away or, sorry. Oh, so yeah, it came back. Back there for you? Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. No worries. Yeah, so V52 is a, a premium USB video bar version of Studio X52. Studio E60, this is a new smart mechanical PTZ camera with optical zoom up to 12X, uh, which supports group framing, as well as present uh, tracking. So these two cameras are now shipping and uh, they are certified for Zoom. They are going through Microsoft Teams certification right now. The third camera uh, we announced back in March was, uh, this is a pre-announcement of the uh, Studio E360 camera. So this is a center of table companion camera that will work with uh, our latest generation front of room camera uh, to deliver what we call best face forward. So highlight out everyone's best angle, no matter where you're sitting, where you're looking, right? So this camera, um, the E360, we're targeting uh, late this year. So toward the end of this year, but those are the camera focused announcement in, uh, back in March. Now, last week, uh, we the primary focus was more of an engine of the solution. So the next generation codec, next generation PC based room system, so that's what uh, we're going to spend most of the time on. Um, so uh, I will kick off with the new Microsoft Teams Rooms solution. So that's a Poly Studio Base Kit G9 Plus. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so I don't really think I need to preach the choir. You know the opportunities you have with Microsoft Teams and the Microsoft Teams Rooms. Um, for Poly Group Video Endpoints, um, poly endpoints connect more poly video endpoints connect to Microsoft Teams as a UCAS 
provider than to anything else, right? So this is a really big business for us. Um, I know Microsoft announced decoupling of Teams license from Microsoft 365 and the Office 365, but uh, existing customers have uh, Teams. And so uh, still pretty big opportunities for us. Uh, next slide, please. So um, if you look at our current Microsoft Teams Rooms on Windows solution, we have had the same, the Poly GC8, uh, the separate compute based solution for several years. And uh, when we talk to customers these days, right, um, very often we hear that uh, our customers want bigger screen, bigger touch screen than eight, eight inch of the uh, Poly GC8. They want flexibility in terms of installing the system in any size room. So not constrained by USB cable length limitation or um, like a flexible cabling that uh, that's much more preferred than very stiff uh, active optical cable. So we get that uh, feedback very often. Also, our solutions, starting from headset and phones to USB video bar product, we support centralized management with poly lens. We haven't been able to deliver that capability to PC rooms. Now that's going to change very soon, but that was uh, uh, one big requirement as well, of course, for our customers. In terms of PC, uh, when we switched from Lenovo and Dell to HP-based compute uh, one and a half year ago, uh, that was a pretty big uh, uh, jump in terms of the PC spec, so 12th generation Intel i7, right? Uh, however, overall experience uh, in terms of the setup wasn't differentiated from any other MTR or W solution. So that's not a, uh, one area we were very successful in promoting the, you know, as a high stake as a big differentiator. So uh, we are addressing all these, but that's a half of the equation in terms of uh, overall Microsoft Teams room system. The other half is of course, audio visual. And uh, when you look at our uh, USB video bars, and the only one video bars like Studio X series, uh, you do see some gaps in terms of the supported features. And like I mentioned, uh, we are starting to address that with our uh, next generation or new generation video bars, starting with Studio B52. Now you will see more products coming this year and next year, and that will eliminate those gaps that I talked about. And of also uh, bring more of a modular uh, room story to the PC-based rooms as well. So on both ends, uh, we are driving uh, the innovation, but AV audio visual side that's driven by camera team, we're gonna focus on the core technology, which is a computer and touch controller. Next slide, please. Now, when Poly joined HP family, uh, there is a huge potential that's, that uh, was envisioned the power of one, uh, we believe we have a very unique advantage in terms of having very deep expertise, both in uh, desktop computing, as well as in conferencing technologies, including touch controllers, all in one video bars, USB video bars, having a one centralized management platform, uh, one vendor for purchasing and end-to-end -end support. And uh, the benefit of these, right, are being realized realized uh, we're starting to see the fruit of the integration. So if you can go to the next slide, the Poly Studio Base Kit G9 Plus. This is a next generation PC-based room system, first launching as a Microsoft Teams room. But more importantly, this is a first product where HP desktop team and the Poly product and product engineering teams worked and collaborated from a very early stage from a product design phase to come out with a product with a unique differentiation. And we really emphasized on delivering simplicity, dependability, and manageability. And those are uh, common threads when we talk to our customers. And this solution is built on the HP trusted HP mini conferencing PC G9. Uh, however, if you can go to the next slide, as I mentioned, we were able to work with HP desktop team from early on. And so we were able to deliver 
the purpose-built collaboration PC. Previously, we were selecting available compute that's fit for uh, MTR with a high spec, but this time we were able to customize and purpose-build the PC for collaboration purpose. So what you're seeing here, the color-coded ports or connections, these are uh, unique to this solution. You are not gonna be able to find this option with any random HP desktop mini product. This is specific to our solution and they have specific collaboration purposes. For instance, yellow port, that's a HDMI ingest uh, that uh, you can connect your laptop to and the share content up to 4K. Red port, that is a USB type C, but supporting what's uh, called uh, DP alt or display port alt mode. So what you can do is instead of camera, you can also connect a monitor or interactive display with a single USB type C cable that supports DP alt. And that way uh, you can uh, support video as well as the USB control with a single cable. Now the purple port, that's uh, probably the most important ports here. And this is used for connecting poly TC10. Uh, it's a local link local PoE port and you can plug in TC10 directly and they will have bigger purpose uh, in the future as well. But uh, these are uh, purpose-built uh, elements of the PC. And that's part of the uh, overall design philosophy uh, for, for this solution. We really aimed for extra simplicity to deliver. Um, and that experience starts when you open up the box, like uh, when you open a PC box, you will see a setup diagram attached to the box with a color coded QR codes. So if you scan the QR code, you will see the short video explaining the purpose of those uh, different color coded ports. When you take out the contents, you will see 10 meter ethernet cable with a purple boot color, which is the same color as a uh, POE port on the PC. And by the way, for the TC10, you will start uh, seeing uh, the purple ring around the ethernet port very soon. So as an installer, you can connect the dot visually, instantly understand this cable connects to the POE port here and here. So uh, it helps in terms of installation. They, it shortens the length of the installation time and reduces errors uh, that's avoidable. And also uh, this is really great uh, if you are uh, supporting somebody uh, remotely on troubleshooting uh, the issues uh, with a color-coded uh, connection. And once TC10 is connected to the compute, it automatically pairs and you can drive all the operations including Windows out-of-box experience from the touch panel. So there is no need to bring additional keyboard and a mouse and connect to the PC. You can drive everything from TC10. Next slide, please. And when we are designing the solution, we didn't end up just supporting single touch controller. So this architecture allows multiple touch control to controllers to be connected to the system. Now, I know like my uh, Zoom supports up to 10 controllers, but in the MTR world, this is uh, very rare. And uh, uh, we really wanted to make sure uh, supporting multiple controllers in Microsoft Teams environment. So when you are connecting multiple TC10s, instead of connecting uh, the TC10 directly to the POE port, you have the local POE switch in between. So you connect the TC10s to the POE switch and the POE switch connect to the POE port on the PC. So I have a short video kind of um, uh, documenting the how uh, multiple touch controllers um, behave. Uh, so let's play the video. Um, so one co controller TC10 is already connected. I connected another and uh, first it boots up once it boots up, it communicates with the PC. It knows that this is a PC that it's connecting to. And uh, um, about a minute later, uh, it shows up the Microsoft Teams Rooms interface. 
And then from that point on, whatever I touch on one controller is replicated on everything, every other controller without any lag. Okay? So think about the implications. Think about the, the large room setup, the boardroom with long tables, uh, training room with U-shaped tables, or classrooms where multiple touch control controllers benefit. Now we can support this. And the cabling is using Ethernet cable, which is flexible, which is really easy in terms of uh, cable length, right? So, so that was a big improvement from previous Microsoft Teams rooms. Now, in terms of uh, dependability, using the robust cabling, the Ethernet cable was one. But also from a software perspective, we made sure that we have HP software services running right? From the eyes of Windows, one TC10 or multiple TC10s, they appear as one virtual monitor. And uh, you want to make sure the virtual monitor connection is first of all established, but maintained throughout the day. The touch capability is uh, working all, all time. All, and so there are services that's monitoring the uh, those uh, functions. There is another service, uh, PolyLens control service that's monitoring if there is any firmware update for TC10, for instance. If there is, instead of update happening at the random time, it regulates the time of the install so that it doesn't interfere with anything. So uh, all these services ensure that the system stays um, healthy, but there's another layer of service HP comms recovery service that's monitoring all these individual services. So if something happens, if the service is not returning the heartbeat, then the, the recovery service will kick in and the restart that service so that even before you noticing it, right, the system goes back to the healthy state. So that's a dependability with software. Next slide, please. And in terms of management, now, PolyLens Room App is installed, pre-installed on the PC. I talked about talked a little bit about PolyLens service functioning uh, behind the scenes on the PC all the time, but also PolyLens Room App makes it super easy to add these PC rooms to PolyLens using PIN codes. Once you add the rooms you will be able to start monitoring and managing those rooms and the connected peripherals from day one. So that becomes part of the initial setup experience, right? Uh, if you go to the next slide, um, this shows some of the functionalities, features and functionality supported uh, today and uh, coming very soon. So take um, um, the device information, for instance. So you can see the inventory of a room that you define the PC-based room and all the connected devices and device information, the software version. And if there's a software version, a newer version available, again, PolyLens and the Lens Room app regulate the time of the installation. Um, so, and also you can remotely restart the PC or connect it to device if you want. Um, if there are service, the update to the services themselves the, that run on the PC, PolyLens and LensRoom uh, deliver the update uh, as well. So um, management becomes really big part of uh, our new Microsoft Teams Rooms solution. Next slide, please. Also, uh, we have the camera control app pre-installed, uh, activated on the system. So no more installing, uh, downloading from a uh, support site and installing on each individual PC. This is part of the original capability that you get. Um, one thing I would mention is um, the previously supported cameras are supported, uh, but uh, new cameras, the Studio E60 and the Studio V52. We are working on adding the uh, camera control capability to the app. The update will be delivered through PolyLens and Lens Room app, but uh, that's what uh, we are working on right now. Uh, there are ways to control E60, for instance, with a remote, and you can web into V52, but uh, that's something that we want to make part of the uh, overall management experience. 
Next slide, please. And um, maybe we can go to the next slide as well. Um, so Poly uh, Studio Base Kit G9 Plus, this is a base kit that consists of TC10, the Black Edition, and the HP Mini IP conferencing PC with Microsoft Teams rooms. So those two products, um, there will not be room bundles or room kits like a previous MTR solution. Uh, so um, we will, uh, well, you will be proposing the base kit plus whatever camera that's appropriate for the room size for the customer. Um, we do publish recommended the room configuration on the product page. So if you go to um, Poly website, the um, new Microsoft Teams rooms on Windows page, you will see this table for instance uh, for different sized rooms. Okay, next slide please. In terms of what's included in the kit, so you have TC10 box and you have the new HP mini IP conferencing PC box. In the PC box, you see uh, pretty similar contents as the current MTR PC. Uh, the only difference being uh, the 10 meter ethernet cable instead of active optical cable. So that's new. And uh, the components like a PC and the power adapter, power adapter is 150 watt. So it's a different power supply, uh, but uh, everything else look pretty much the same. Okay, next slide, please. And uh, here's the uh, uh, product part numbers. This should, you should be able to access the uh, pricing information, the, the part numbers, and uh, these should be orderable as I understand, uh, except for the bottom one, which is a TAA for North America or uh, United States, but uh, everything else um, should be uh, available. Yeah. And, uh, Tomorrow uh, is a GA date. Um, so we should start shipping the product, uh, starting with uh, APJ uh, very, very soon. Uh, here is a services part number. Uh, so the base kit has one year limited warranty and we strongly recommend uh, Poly Plus services, partner Poly Plus or Poly Plus services attached uh, to the product uh, for, um, all the benefits that the services offer, okay? Um, so uh, this is a slide that compares the current MTR and the studio base kit G9 Plus. And I think I covered uh, most of them uh, on different slides, but um, uh, just looking at the, the uh, two from a PC perspective, we did uh, update the processor from a 12 Intel i7 to 13th generation i7. Um, again, the uh, Studio G9 Plus, that's the uh, purpose-built PC uh, and they have color-coded uh, ports that weren't there before like HDMI ingest port and the link local PoE port. And there are software elements that weren't uh, available. So uh, multiple services, software services running and touch console, the number of touch consoles, the type of touch console from GC8 to TC10. So if you compare every line, you can notice that uh, we made an improvement on everything. Um, so uh, next slide, please. Yep. So when you pair the Poly Studio Base Kit G9 Plus with newer camera technologies, right? Uh, current, uh, including current technologies, you, you will get PolyDirector AI different framing experiences, but with product like a Studio B52, you will get PolyDirector AI perimeter. Uh, as I was saying, the gap between the USB and the uh, uh, Poly Video OS uh, appliances uh, will be removed with these uh, new generation of uh, products. You will get Poly Studio E360 multi cam support through the newer generation of camera uh, technology. So, uh, those will be supported, and you will get something like sound reflection reduction, which isn't available on older uh, USB uh, video bar technology. So, uh, that's what you can expect under that. 
um, combined with very high spec compute. Okay. So this is my last slide before handing off to Bob. Why would you um, promote Poly Studio Base Kit G9 Plus to your customers, right? Again, we're going back to how one, the HP team and Poly team, desktop team and the Poly conferencing technology, right? We worked together from early on to build something unique, something differentiated. We delivered extra simplicity and uh, also ability to scale more than one controller up to four controllers are supported. Uh, we built a dependability from a software perspective, from a cabling, the robustness of the cabling, uh, manageability. And so very robust at the core as well. And frankly, we don't know what we don't know. Microsoft is adding a lot of new capabilities to Microsoft Teams as a whole. And they are doing a lot of like AI innovation almost like every week, right? We want to be prepared, not just for the next 12 months, but a few, few years ahead. So building the foundation that is powerful, that can support future uh, enhancements, that's what we built. So that's the uh, new Poly Studio Base Kit uh, G9 Plus. You can find product presentation and product brief, uh, those assets on partner, HP Partner Portal starting today. So with that, I'm going to hand off to Bob. All right. Thanks, Takeshi. And Takeshi, uh, there are a couple of questions actually popped into the Q&A session section and in the chat section. So you can take a look. And if just as a reminder, if you could drop your questions uh, from here on into the Q&A, that just makes it easier on us because then it also ends up in the transcript of the call. So that makes it great for everybody going forward. All right. Well, hello, everybody. I am Bob Knopf. I'm on the product marketing team for Room Video Solutions. And today I am excited to talk to you about the Poly Studio G62. And the G62, if you just switch to the next slide, it's, a, it's really meant for the large room. And the reason we're still so interested in large rooms is one, there's a lot of business to be had, certainly in the large rooms, but there's challenges in the large room. And you all know these challenges just as well as all of your customers do as well. You have from a video perspective in those large rooms, it's difficult to get everyone captured with just a single camera in the front of the room or in the rear of the, cam rear of the room. It's difficult to see everyone at one time. From an audio perspective, it's even more challenging. People are sitting all over the room. It might be a training space. And it's difficult, again, to pick up everyone with just a single microphone or a couple of microphones. So it's important to have that interoperability with external DSPs or ability to add many more microphones. Of course, the setup and integration for your customers, for you, it's, it's no longer, you know, We've traditionally had to have extensive, expensive, say, USB extenders to run cables, uh, camera cables or proprietary cables. We had HDCI for many, many, many years. And to come up with long cables there, they were big and bulky and expensive. Well, these, those are all the challenges that we are trying to move away from. Next slide. Another challenge we have just in conference rooms in general is the, the front of room camera doesn't capture everyone equally. So here you can see my head when I'm talking to someone across the table, I'm completely ignoring everyone that's on the far side. So there's no cameras on the sidewall, for example, in this particular conference room or in the back of the room that would see me looking to the, that would see me looking to the, to the person across the table from me. So it really keeps the people on the, the far end just out of the conversation at all. Next slide. So happy to introduce the Poly Studio G62. This is the G62 right here in my hands. It's very compact. It's designed to connect, but it's made to expand. And I'll definitely talk a little bit more about that. It's modular in design. In, if you haven't heard us talk about modular or modularity, 
you're going to hear us talk a lot more about that um, from here on out. It's the ability to add multiple cameras, microphones, and controllers. It's integrated ready setup. Uh, we have we have magnets that are built into the base box of this that can easily be mounted on the the codec can easily mount then into an AV rack shelf. It can be mounted into um, on the back of a monitor, for example, or it can be mounted on our um, optional metal faceplate. And I'll talk a little about that in just a second. The user experience is the same as we have on all of our other video products, Studio X, et cetera. We have the ability to do all the director AI, noise block AI, all of that. We have the video as a service, um, team certified. It'll be Zoom certified here very shortly. Tencent, all the other um, fast services that you know and love today, your customers love. Those will also be available on the G62 over the next few months as a certified product. It's priced well below the competition. So the price point of the G62 starts, <coughs> excuse me, starts at $1,999 US dollars. And I'll talk about a little bit more about what that includes here in just a moment. I already talked about the certification process for Zoom, Teams, Tencent, and others. And again, um, We'll talk about this in more detail in just a moment. The management system, as Takeshi's already mentioned, with PolyLens, has very robust management with the Studio G62. We're not just looking at the codec itself, but we're also looking at all those peripherals that are attached, cameras, microphones, so your users know exactly what might be uh, interoper inoperable in that conference room. What's cool about the G62 and the large room solution, it's the same experience in the large room as a user would have in the a huddle space, medium-sized conference rooms. It's the same user interface, the same type of technology that they're used to, same administration of, of the unit. Next slide. So when we talk about modular room, here's what I mean, okay? So you're able now to connect multiple cameras, multiple microphones directly to um, through the to the G62 through a network switch. The only devices that are running to the corporate network would be the Poly TC10 for control and the G62 itself. We do have a local link network port or an LLN port on the back of the G62 that can, can connect to a network switch that is not connected to the corporate network, it's just purely connected directly to the G62. So all of your traffic for the cameras and microphones are connected to the switch and not to the corporate network. You also see a Studio E360 on the table here. So if your customers are interested in adopting three, a 360 camera in their conference room, especially in those larger spaces, the, e, the G62 is the way to go because the G7500 will not support the E360. You already may know that, you may not know that, this might be brand new news, but let me repeat that again. The G7500 will not support the Studio E360, the G62 does. Next slide, please. So right off the bat, let's talk about who your customer is. And some of this is gonna be easy peasy for you. So those customers that have those large conference rooms, training rooms, um, the folks that need to have multiple cameras, multiple microphones, maybe they need to connect to an, a third-party audio DSP, for example. That is exactly where the G62 shines. It is meant for those types of rooms. The folks that have, need upgrades to their existing equipment, we've got a, many, many tens of thousands of users around the world that are using HDX group series even, and, uh, G7, and G7500s. So this will be a, just a, a nice upgrade for them. It'll get them into the latest and greatest technology. And this is really where you wanna be looking. I mean, I can't tell you already how many folks we are quoting for G62 to that are just looking to do a simple upgrade. Next slide. I talked about the, cert the certifications. As I, as I said, right right now, right this second, we're certified for Microsoft Teams. Coming very soon will be Zoom, 
and they'll be out in our software release, our next software release, which is coming in just a literally a few weeks. We'll also then be after that we'll be certified for uh, Tencent. Another certification that's in progress is Google Meet, and there's other service providers that don't require certification. It's just compatible with them. And of course, it's kind of as Takeshi said, we have TAA uh, in the United States for different government applications. And as Takeshi said as well, with um, the G9 Plus, we have all these different director AI capabilities, which are camera framing technologies, group framing, speaker framing, people framing. As I mentioned as well, we have Poly E360 support. Of course, we have all the noise block AI uh, features in here, sound reflection reduction. It's going to block out the unwanted noises from around the, from around the rooms. So it's important to know that, again, you're going to have that same user experience in the Studio G62 as you've had with the Studio X line as well. Next slide. One thing that's really cool and I'm very excited to talk about is the sustainability. And this is becoming a much bigger deal with many of your customers that are you're seeing this now in requests for quotes, requests for information, you know, how much of this product is sustainable. And in the HP, this is in the DNA of every PC, every accessory, how much of the plastics, how much of the metals are recycled or recycle, recyclable. So we'll start out with just the packaging. All the packaging of the G62 is recyclable. We've done cool little things. We've gotten rid of the twist ties, for example, the metal twist ties for our cables. We've now replaced that with a Velcro uh, Velcro strap that can be used during the installation of the product to, to help with cable management. We've gotten rid of all the plastic bags, the foam, all that stuff. Now the entire uh, kit can be recycled. All the um, cardboard can be recycled. We have 80% in the codec itself, 80% of the plastics are post-consumer recycled, which is really a high number. The metals, which is a, a pretty unique thing, 20% of the metals that are used inside, so for the heat sink and so forth, 20% of the metals are recycled in, in the product, giving us an overall number of about 48% of the products in the, or the materials within the G62 are recycled. That's a really a cool number. This is the first codec from Poly that was gone through the stringent HP uh, sustainability regime. Next slide, please. So I talked a little bit about that, that, fast, that metal fastener plate. So this is the, the, the fastener plate. It is, it is meant to be easily mounted on, on the wall, has little sticky tabs on the back that aren't meant to hang. It's, it's meant to assist in actually mounting of the, uh, mounting of the device. So like I said, again, we have metal, we have magnets on the back of the, uh, the G62. So once I get the system just put, put on there, now we've got the we've got the G62 mounted right here on the metal plate. So that's going to make it uh, much easier for your end users. Now the G62 does not have a power brick built. It doesn't have a power brick. This the G62 uses PoE Plus as its power supply. And if your customer doesn't have PoE Plus as a uh, from their network, we do have an accessory, a PoE Plus power brick that could also be mounted on this um, because that the power the PoE accessory has a um, magnets built into it as well. So it's really exciting, and I should have made a bigger point to that earlier that we don't or we don't have an additional power brick. We're just supporting um, PoE Plus as the main power for the G62. Next slide, please. And I talked about the importance of audio, and you all know this as well as I do. Audio in these larger spaces is, can be a very difficult thing. So we're taking it very seriously. We are at launch right now. We're supporting three IP microphones. That's the same as the G7500. But we're going to have a much greater number supported very shortly, uh, post post launch and as we begin shipping so we'll be able to support multiple microphones in a much in a large space that includes the table microphones as well as the ceiling microphones 
What's nice about the ceiling microphones, you can actually build a true acoustic fence literally with multiple microphones that can block out all that unwanted noise from perhaps something outside of the conference space, maybe emergency equipment, those types of things. But we also support the third-party DSPs via USB. So if your customers already have, say, a share system, a BiAmp, QSC, if they already have that installed in their conference room, we can just plug that right into the, G, the G62 and use all of the speakers, microphones that are already inside in, in that conference room. Nothing else needs to be done. We also have a three and a half millimeter on the back if they want to go in analog audio as well. Next slide, please. Something that is new that is uh, with our latest and greatest software, it's not necessarily just a G62 uh, version. It's also an X52. We now support three displays with Zoom. And we do that through a third-party device from Pluggable. This is not a Poly or an HP part number. This is just a literally a $50 little adapter you can buy on your favorite your favorite website. Um, these are it's very straightforward. Again, this is purely for Zoom. It's not for Poly OS Teams, any others, just for Zoom. And uh, you can't again. It's not sold directly through HP, but you're, it's readily available and very, very inexpensive for, the, for your customer. Next slide, please. So really, what's in the box? And let's look a little closer into that, uh, that back panel. The back panel has the uh, 3.5 millimeter audio inputs. We have a couple of USB um, inputs there. Remember, our cameras can be brought in via USB or over IP. We are certifying a third-party USB hub to, ex to allow users, if they need to plug in multiple more USB devices, they will be able to do that through that USB hub if they go above the two. We have uh, audio, we have content video in, or it could be a, a, a camera source coming in via HDMI. Remember, you can change that camera source, that HDMI source, to people if you want to use it as a, as a camera source. We have an Alt DP uh, USB C port here for BYOD. What's very important to know about the G62 versus all the other codecs we've we've had with BYOD, with all the other codecs, you've had to run a USB C a USB C cable and an HDMI cable in order to get the video up to your monitor. That is no longer the case. All we need is one cable, one USB C cable to the to the customers or the user's PC, and that will push the, uh, the all the content to the dis all the content to the the codec and to the display. So no longer needing a HDMI cable and USB-C. It's just one cable now, which is a big step forward for us. Our HDMI outputs. Oh, sorry, there, Jessica. Our HDMI outputs uh, support dual 4K. Uh, they're both so they're both 4K. In previous versions, we had 1080p and 4K. They're both 4K now. And then um, I'll talk about more about what's in the box in those types of things in just a, a couple of slides. So let's move on. So when you order the G62, it's a little different than how our G7500 was. Our G7500 had kits, right? You could get the you could get it bundled with a camera. It would, it would come with a camera, it would come with a microphone. You get it bundled with the TC10, uh, and had all the cables that you know you needed, or you, many times you had more cables than you needed. On the G62, it is not that way. Because the G62 is designed to be basically customized for your, your users, your customers, they can pick and choose what cameras, what microphones. They may not need microphones. Do they need a remote control, a handheld remote control, or they need a TC10. The, the, the possibilities for us to build all these separate kits was, I mean, it could have been astronomical. It just was exponential how many different part numbers we could have. So we've narrowed it down really to two different SKUs for on a global basis. One's the base SKU, which just includes the G62 itself and two cables, an HDMI cable and an Ethernet cable. The second SKU is the codec, the cup, the few cables, and a mounting plate. Okay. So I'd never said we doesn't come with microphones, it doesn't come with a camera. 
Again, that's, of course, one of the reasons why we start at $1,999. But then you can add on the camera that you need. Do you need an E70? Do you need an, e, an E60? Keep in mind, the E70 right now is IP or USB. The E60 right now is USB only. That will go. That will be IP at some point in the in the future. I don't have an exact date yet, but it's gonna be it's going to be there. You can add a microphone, table microphones, ceiling microphones. Maybe you need a Poly Tree C, Trio C60. Maybe your customer doesn't need microphones at all. Add that controller TC10. We do support the Bluetooth remote control as well as the IR uh, remote control. Then if they need additional accessories, let's say the the PoE Plus adapter. You can add that in there. Service is optional. It's not required on the G62. So your customer, you know, of course, we highly recommend service and, um, and all the great feet, all the great stuff that the, our service plans can provide, but it's not required. Next slide, please. And just here's a little difference between the G7500 and the G62. What we've got, um, it, just the big difference is there. We have 4K outputs. We support three monitors for Zoom, PoE Plus adapter, uh, modular room. It's gonna. This is what's important. The G62 is the room codec, the, the integrated room, the large room codec for the future because it will support that E360, and uh, our previous generation, the G7500, will not. Um, so just just keep that in mind uh, as you're as you're talking to your customers. Next slide. So really, you're going to win. It's, it's hands down. We are probably leads the market in large room deployments of video codecs already. You have the innovative technology, the director AI, noise block AI. It, we, it works so well in large, large rooms. And the portfolio is extremely broad from you know, literally your PC to the large rooms, medium, small, medium, large size rooms, PC-based rooms. So we are giving the customers and you all a really big choice of what cost, what you may need for these various conference rooms. Next slide. And just so you know, all these resources that we, we do have available for you. We have got uh, data sheets, um, some sales briefs are more customer focused. We've got uh, some video demonstrations and so forth, training presentations that will be available on our port partner portal very soon hopefully uh tomorrow you'll see this you'll start to see the partner portal be populated with all of the uh with all the data and the product is shipping now so it's quotable and shipping uh as of uh, monday of this week we have them in our we have them in our warehouses around the world now the homologation for apj you're probably very familiar with when we announce products when your specific region or your specific country starts to get uh, the approval to sell, same thing's gonna be happening with the G62. All right. The other thing I wanna talk to you about, just a couple of slides on, is our Poly Video o OS version 4.3. It's coming out uh, in the end of, hopefully we'll see it by the end of June, the very early July. Some really nice features and functionality built in there. Um, Really, again, I've talked about the third display support already on for Zoom, which is great because keep in mind, it's not just G62, it's X52 as well. We have um, presenter tracking on Studio E60 when it's connected to the G62 or the G7500, which is great. We have um, AV control. That's the big one I, wanna, I really want to touch upon. AV control on our on our TC10s. So let's go ahead and just go jump to the next slide. So AV control is a really cool piece of functionality and a nice feature for your for your customers. And you may have been familiar with this with the TC8. We had we were doing something similar. We were doing something just like this with uh, with Xtron early on, but now we've expanded it to many more players in the industry. And giving you much more flexibility to connect uh, to these various control systems, like from Xtron to Crestron to Aveo to QSys, all these now we have the ability to control their controllers 
right from the TC10, right from the TC10, be it call control for the the poly video system or lights, environmental controls, etc. And go to the jump to the next slide. This is just an example of the TC10 using uh, connected to lightware, and it's uh, you now have the capability to have all this running on the right there on the TC10. So your customer no longer would have to have to have two separate controllers in the room. They can just have the TC10, and of course it does require some additional programming. You know, in some cases it does it will require some programming um, in order to get the the look you might they may want to have on their screen. But uh, we can also put just up a simple web page. So maybe they have a help uh, a help section that they want to. If somebody runs into an issue in their conference room, so they could swipe over, literally hit the help desk, and it could bring up different types of videos. It could bring up um, PDFs, whatever it might be from the website that would show right there natively on the TC10. Next slide. So availability right now. Uh, for the uh, for 4.3, it's going to in this AV control. We have what's what's called uh, compatible and um, and certified, basically. And we have you're going to see a lot of different vendors that will be become more and more certified. Even though it's going to be operable, uh, like many other vendors, just can plug and play. They're, they'll be operable. And now there's a, Inside the TC10, there's actually a web server that's built into the TC10 that you're able to log into with version 4.3. And that's where you go in to actually set up the authentication and those types of things. Next slide, please. So that's about it for us with all of these. Uh, with the Poly GC9 Plus, uh, or GC, G9 Plus, and the G62. And Takeshi, you have some questions out there? But there are a lot of questions about the G62, so All right. we can take a look. All yeah. right. All right. All right, so I'll just start. I see possible demo of G62. I would talk to your uh, channel sales engineer, your sales architect. That would be the uh, the quickest route to getting yourself a uh, the G62 or your poly, uh, your channel manager, they are, they'd be able to help you out. Got that one. So the G62 is the replacement for the G7500. Uh, there's no end of life immediately set on when the G7500 is going to go end of, end of sale and end of life. If I was to bet, I would probably say we'd, we would see the end of life of the G7500 or end of sale on the G7500, uh, probably in the November timeframe. Again, that I could be 100% wrong. We might also have all this inventory and we could go on for another year, which I don't think that's going to happen. But yes, it is going to be the replacement for it. So the number of cameras that we support, uh, we can support up to uh, four cameras currently. And... And that is on the that's on the G62. The IP cameras currently we support one IP camera on the G on the G62. With the future software upgrade, we're going to support additional an additional uh, IP camera. Of course, just keep an eye look out on your um, uh, release notes for that. All right. Yeah, we'll have uh, the we for USB. The USB cable, we do supply a uh, a USB-C cable. If you get them, it doesn't come with the base kit. If it comes with the base kit plus the mounting plate kit, we do supply a three meter. And I realize three meters is not that long to get from the table to the to the uh, to the the G62, which could be mounted in an AV rack somewhere. So just keep that in mind. Um, but we do have a specification on the USB-C cable. I mean, as you all probably are aware, not every USB cable is designed the same, and there are small tweaks that make a USB-C cable better than the others. All right. Um, 
All right. Uh, speakers, we don't uh, really have a, uh, a recommended speaker. Uh, we, and you can use a sound, you could definitely use a sound bar if you wanted to use a sound bar um, for, for like anything with the camera technology and so forth. The camera uh, for framing, the speaker tracking, we have we do a very good job making sure that this this camera is not focused up at a speaker in the in the room because um, we're using we're not just looking for the voice or listening for the voice we're also looking for facial features so it's making sure that or we're looking for a, in some cases a torso so it's making sure that it's focused on a person and not just the voice um, we learned that early on <laughs> with our technology. And then uh, the E360 with the uh, number of E360s. Uh, when the E360 ships in uh, late in 2024, it will support one E360, but it is certainly on the near-term roadmap after that to support an additional three an additional E360s. So you'll be able to have multiples, but at the beginning, it'll just be one E360. Um, bum, bum, bum. Yeah, it's again. It's that we had a great question here about multiple cameras and multi-view layouts. That is the plan, the the long-term vision of product management and engineering to be able to actually have, you know, the multi-cam layout. Like if you want to have a back the room camera and a front of the room to be able to send that as a composited view. In the very first iteration, like when we're shipping right now, it's not like that. It's a manual switch between the cameras. But those are all things that we're looking to do, especially when you start to mix in the E360. That takes into consideration what view is absolutely the best. And it's always sending, it'll always be sending that. Okay, and then the E360 and E60 to connect to each other. Uh, E360 is IP. Um, so everything would be in the E60. So if you're using an E60 and an E360, so the E60 has the front of the room camera and the E360, everything would be connected over IP. Uh, just so you know. So it's, oh, I see. So we've got that. All right. And how about Studio P's? I'm not really sure of what's going to be happening on the studio, the, the P, the studio, like the P15 line and so forth. Obviously, we're making improve, we're making, you know, entire product line enhancements um, to, to our lower end kind of small room or even the, the, the personal, the personal systems. The P15 is awesome. I, I just, I don't know off the top. We can look into it, but I, I don't know. And I, I don't know if to guess you would know. No, no, um, no, I don't. Okay. Yeah, we'll 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 look into that though. And then uh Crestron control TC ten, you we can do it right now. I mean, yeah, so one of the demos that we can get posted to the partner portal is actually uh, us actually using the TC ten to control a Crestron system. We've got the controller and we're just doing a simple A B switch between uh a couple of different codecs and like a a DVD player or a media player connected. So yeah, we can do that. We can do that today. It does take some, a little bit of programming, obviously to make your screen look the way you want it to look, but yeah, we can do it right now. With, with four dot, with the four, I should say right now, I'm so used to working with software that we have in our hands, four dot three software, which again, will be out in the next uh, month. And then, um, I would have to see about uh, for all platforms. Yeah, I think it, I I think it's uh, would work. I'm not positive. I, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure, but I've seen Teams and Zooms. Um, bear yeah. in mind these are Android, not Teams on Windows. Uh, like uh, with a uh, Studio Basic G9 Plus with TC10, that's not the uh, the same. So this is a. Uh, um, as Bob was mentioning, 4.3 Poly Video OS, so uh, applicable to the our Android devices. Um, but I've seen Teams and I've seen Zoom 
Google, I suspect is the same. Uh, you swipe it and you access this functionality. So, right. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think it's probably going to be all the same. And then, uh, so we'll, but we can look into that a little bit more. And then, uh, Takeshi's one in there about the, the more yeah. TC10s. So, right now, um, the multiple touch controller support is limited to uh, this new Studio Base Kit G9 solution. Um, so, not available to our Studio X and G62. Um, maybe something that we will look into, but uh, uh, this is not available, only available to the new Studio Base Kit G9 Plus. Awesome. And then uh, as to that E360 question, you know, the coverage range, Takeshi and I really don't know. <laughs> it's, it's um, we're still a few months away from shipping in the date, like the tech specs are not out yet for us. So we, we, we just don't know yet. I can tell you, Takeshi and I did a demo video with an E360 a couple months ago, and it was incredible. Um, the camera quality is unbelievable. And um, so I don't know exactly how far you can sit away from the table or how far those types of things yet, but yeah, that will tuned. all be released. Stay <laughs> E360, tuned. E360, we will likely have another session once we get closer to GA. Um, on that product to make sure that you guys have yeah. um, everything that you need. So we'll host this session for that product. It's great to know that you are asking a lot of questions. Um, thank you everybody for the engagement. I think, oh, if we wanna answer maybe one that one more question, do we know the answer? Um, or maybe we've already answered it, E360 and E60? Uh, yeah, we did answer, yeah, it's uh, okay. over IP. Everything's oh, over IP. Thanks for asking such great questions, everybody, and for joining us on this session. Please keep an eye out for these sessions moving forward. I hope they are helpful for you. If you have any feedback, always feel free to reach out to myself or anybody else here. Um, and I hope you all have a great rest of the day. And thank you to my presenters. Great job, Bob and Takeshi. Always a pleasure. Thanks, y'all. Have a great day. Thank you. All right.